Hi there, in this video I'm in New Brighton and I'm going to give you some composition tips. So today is ridiculously busy despite it being the middle of November. I'm on the Wirral today at the top end of it, a place called New Brighton. Here behind me is Perch Rock Lighthouse. Now if you follow me over here, behind me in this direction are Liverpool Docks. You probably can't see at the moment, but way down there in the distance is Liverpool itself and the Liver Building and all the famous buildings in Liverpool. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about composition techniques and hopefully help you to enjoy your photography. Thinking about composition is absolutely vital to improve your photographs. If your composition isn't right, your photographs just won't feel right and you probably won't quite know why. Now there are some rules that you can follow. They aren't hard and fast, they're very subjective. What one person thinks looks good, another person might not. But there are some general ideas that you can follow and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. One of the classical compositional techniques is called the rule of thirds. Basically what this means is that you divide the image up into nine rectangles with two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, slicing the image into equal thirds down and across the frame. What that does is it gives you some guides about where to place important objects within the frame. So what I've done with this image is I've put the lighthouse on one of the thirds and I've put the horizon on one of the other thirds. And it just makes the whole image seem a little bit more artistic and it just works. The amount of times that I use this technique without even thinking, I'll place the object on the thirds almost instinctively. Now it's not a rule that you have to follow, but it can really help with your composition. And especially if you put something that's really important on what's called a hotspot, where the horizontal and vertical lines cross, there are four hotspots around the frame. And if you can get one of your important items there, it really does help the composition. So I've set the camera up just here, looking directly at the lighthouse, and I've put the lighthouse bang in the middle of the frame on purpose because the rocks on the beach provide what we call leading lines. Now leading lines are very, very useful in composition because they lead the viewer's eye through the composition to a point of interest. Now that's vitally important that when you follow a leading line, you get to a point of interest. I see many things like paths that lead you through the, the scene, but when you get to the end of the path, there's nothing there. So better that in mind but because of the perspective of the lens it makes these lines and these rocks I really appear that it's pointing towards the lighthouse and that makes for a very strong composition. Now another thing to consider in your images is balance. Now I know balance normally has to do with weight um, but you can kind of use that as an analogy in your images to try and help you with your composition. It's more visual than weight but you can see that the lighthouse here is quite dominant. So what I've done is I've taken an image of the lighthouse on its own on the beach so I'm pointing slightly in that direction but then I've turned the camera around ever so slightly to include this seawall and because the seawall is quite dark and it feels weighty, it kind of balances the image up a little bit more. So I prefer that to the lighthouse on its own. But again, it's very subjective. You might say, no, I disagree with you. I prefer the lighthouse on its own. And that's what photography is all about. One thing to consider is the height that you have the camera at. It's very common to keep the camera at eye level all of the time and take all of your pictures from that point of view. But consider kneeling down, getting lower, or moving to stand somewhere else. It can really help with the composition. In this image here, what I've done is I've found a quite large pool of water that will reflect the whole of the lighthouse. But to get the lighthouse reflected and an interesting rock that I've spotted in the frame together, what I had to do is extend the 
centre column of the tripod to its full height to get both of them in the frame together. Now remember where you are can make a big difference, even taking a few steps to the left or the right can really improve your image. It's a really good exercise to go to one location and spend a lot of time just trying to scout out the very best composition. Try different places, crouch down, stand up, move to the left, move to the right. Try all different kind of things to just try and find that perfect formation. Don't be satisfied with the first thing that you see. So here's another example of where I had to work quite a bit harder to find the best angle to get the shot. I had to carefully scale the concrete blocks which were fairly slippery and then set the camera up on top of the breakwater. This allowed me to look all the way along to show off the curve. To get the best possible shot I had to get as high as possible. What I did with this image is I converted it to mono to make the man-made quality of the concrete stand out. What I've tried to do here is demonstrate how depth of field can really focus the viewer's eye on a particular point. What I've done is I put my wide angle lens on that goes down to 1.8 aperture and that gives you a really shallow depth of field. So I focus very, very carefully on this um, breakwater block just here, right in the foreground. And what that does is it throws everything else all the way down the curve of this breakwater out of focus. Now, I'm not sure how well it'll work as a composition or how well it'll work as a photograph, but it'll give you an idea on what you can do with depth of field. So another little tip you can use is to find frames. Now these could be natural, they could be trees overhanging a subject, or they could be an archway or something like that, like a window. Or just here what I've done is I've found a gap through these concrete blocks that make up the breakwater and I've set the lighthouse in between that gap. And because the bottom of the lighthouse is sat in water, the bottom is quite bright and it stands out against the darkness of these concrete blocks. While I've been filming this afternoon, I've had my time-lapse camera running. So if you haven't seen the review that I did, I'll put a link just up here, but hopefully it should show the tide coming in and maybe even a little bit of me wandering around on the beach. So that's the end of the tutorial part of the video. What I'm gonna do now, because I've got about half an hour left of good light, the sky is starting to get really interesting. So I'm gonna go around the location a little bit more to see if I can improve on any of the shots with some better light in the sky. And I'll put the best images on the screen in a few seconds.
Hope that you found that video useful. Composition is a really vital thing that you need to think about to improve your photographs. But do bear in mind that once you've got used to some of the rules, then they're there to be broken. They are not absolutely hard and fast set in stone rules and don't let anybody tell you any different. They're just there to give you a guide to make sure that you are thinking along the right lines. But then feel free to experiment. So if you've enjoyed this video today, don't forget to let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account, that's at the Oakton Photography. You can leave me a comment there and you can also see lots of my pictures. Now, if you like what I do here on the channel, you can support me by visiting my Teespring store. There, I've got a brand new range of merchandise on offer, so go and check out the new designs. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications. That way you stay up to date with all of my future content and it really helps me out. Don't forget you can go and check out this video up here. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live at 4 o'clock on Sunday. But all that's left now is to say stay safe and I'll see you soon.